Let's now start with this bulletin by bringing you the COVID-19 updates from the United States. As the number of cases in the U.S. continues to surge, President Donald Trump and his administration clashed with governors of states over ending the lockdown and opening up the U.S. economy. The United States remains the worst hit country in the world with more than 746,000 cases and 40,000 deaths. New York, which is the epicenter of the virus in the U.S. currently, has borne the brunt of this pandemic with more than 18,000 deaths. But it finally looks like New York may have now crossed the high point. The question of whether we've been past the apex, past the high point, and it turned out the high point wasn't a point, but the high point was a plateau, and we got up to a high point, and then we just stayed at that level for a while. But if the data holds, and if this trend holds, uh, we are past the high point, and all indications at this point are we that we are on a descent. Whether or not the descent continues depends on what we do, but right now we, we are on a descent. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, however, slammed Trump, asking him to push Republicans in the U.S. Senate to direct more federal funding to cities and states. So my question is, Mr. Trump, Mr. President, are you going to save New York City or are you telling New York City to drop dead? Which one is it? But you have to speak up now or the Senate will not act and we will not get the help we need. It's as simple as that. New York's improving situation comes as Trump continues to clash with governors. This time, the focus is on testing. Experts have said that testing is key to reopening the American economy. But state governors allege that testing capacity is far below the required levels. However, Vice President Mike Pence countered this claim, saying that U.S. states had the ability to do enough testing to move into Phase 1. Phase 1 ends stay-at-home restrictions for healthy people, also allowing public places to reopen with some form of physical distancing. But even with more than 40,000 dead, the Trump administration continues to shift the blame. The anti-lockdown protests in several U.S. cities even attracted support from Trump. Trump even called to liberate... Michigan, Minnesota and Virginia, all states with Democratic governors from stay-at-home orders. These are people expressing their views. I, I see where they are and I see the way they're working. They seem to be very responsible people to me, uh, but it's, uh, you know, they've been treated a little bit rough. Back-to-work protests resumed in several parts of the country as people demanded to go out. The visuals on your screen now show a medical worker standing in the middle of a road, blocking an anti-lockdown protester. More than 22 million people have filed for unemployment benefits in the past one month as the pandemic continues to hammer the U.S. economy.